All right, hey everybody. We want to have a look at biotechnology stocks uh, to uh, to start off, and um, this is part of the market that's shown a lot of relative underperformance uh, year to date. In fact, uh, for the past maybe twelve months or so, but we're starting to see signs that the sort of um, tailwinds that we're seeing are starting to, to become really interesting. So there's really two sides that are of the story here. Um, one side is technical, which I'll go through. But first, just quickly as an FYI. Um, there is a lot of potential money to be put through M&A in the biotechnology sector. Basically, the top, um, I think, five or ten uh, pharmaceutical companies out there, it's probably the top five, the big ones, they have a combined multi, 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 multi billion dollar budget just to, uh, to, to basically do M&A in the biotech space as uh, sort of their patents are expiring on a whole bunch of other drugs. So that's kind of like the, the, if you will, the dog that wags the tail. But let's have a look at some charts and just kind of give us some basic idea of where we think we might be uh, on this. So first of all, this is the XBI ETF. And you can see just if I draw some simple parallel lines just connecting the lows, this is kind of where we're at. We're at the lower end of the range you can see uh, here from uh, a a – well, this goes back, you know, 12 years or so. So that's a pretty a pretty nice thing to, to see. The IBB ETF, which is a, sort of the larger tech uh, part of this, too, technically looks really nice. You can see we've basically been stuck in a range that had a breakout attempt retracing now into the the sort of channel. And it looks to me like we're, we're regrouping here. Now, before we look at all of this, um, on a bit more of a near-term perspective, let me just quickly show you guys what some of these things look like in relative terms. So let's take a look at IBB. And uh, the again, this is more of the larger tech biotech ETF and divided by, say, the S&P 500, just to give us an idea of what the relative weakness has been. And you can see it's not a pretty picture. I mean, this thing continues to look really bad, relatively speaking, versus the S&P 500, uh, again, in, in, in relative terms. Uh, and in fact, we are coming into a pretty interesting area. Now you can say, you can see this used to be previous resistance. Now it could be support. Again, this is the relative chart. And this matters because this is what a lot of, this basically tells us where, what fund managers are looking at in, in relative terms, where they're looking to allocate money uh, versus where um, they are not. And I'm trying to quickly bring up a Fibonacci retracement tool. So if I were to take the lows in 207 and we're to go up here, you can see we've broken through basically all the FIB levels. We're at the last one, the 70 something percent one down here, um, and that coincides with retracement. So that's IBB versus the SPY. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at something like Amgen, which is one of the largest components in the, um, in the IBB, and you divide that by the S&P 500, it is still a really just choppy, hot mess. There's really no nothing going on here uh, on the bigger picture chart. But as you'll see in a minute, on the um, larger, uh, on the shorter time frames, we're starting to see uh, some better price action. So let's have a look at, uh, let's start off with the XBI ETF and look at that in a more near-term perspective on the uh, daily chart. And here what you're seeing is if you want to be technical about it, sort of an inverse head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And if we were to break, let's say above $95 and change with uh, a, you know some decent force, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to, to kind of start filling some of this empty space up here into the low 100s. Uh, not a heck of a lot different for the IBB. Here, in fact, it's a bit more pronounced even. And you can see, again, you know, plenty of potential upside if we get above maybe 135, I think there's plenty of open space into uh, the mid 140s. So uh, again, you know, this is IBB. I really think this is a bigger picture story for 2022. It's not just a little trade. Um, so we're approaching this maybe from a trading perspective in the near term to see if the recent lows hold, but really something that we're looking to allocate capital to um, through a bigger picture lens in 2022 as maybe some of those tailwinds that we're going to see from um, from m a pent up m a m a demand in this space from large cap mega cap pharmaceutical uh, starts coming to fru to fruition and we actually think that might be a second half 2022 story i hope this helps and we'll see you again soon